and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Vector Hugo 4-16x44 with illuminated reticle. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the Vector Hugo 4-16x44 with illuminated reticle. Now, this rifle scope retails for just under $200 US. Uh, you can buy directly from their website. You can even find it on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description below. So let's start this review off with the glass quality. Now, this glass quality, I've been told, is the same as that's in the Vector Everest, the same that's in the Vector Marksman. So it should be pretty decent out past around 300, 400 meters. You should be fairly satisfied. So have a look for yourselves. This is at four magnification. And this is at 16 magnification. So for the glass quality, we are going to give it a 4 out of 5. Remember, the review is based on the price point, and at this price, the glass is quite good for the price. Uh, next, we have the eye relief. Well, at the highest magnification, it has 3.9 inches of eye relief. At the lowest magnification, it has 4.1, which is fantastic. Additionally, the eye box in this rifle scope is very, very forgiving, which is really nice to see on an optic of this price point. Additionally, the fast focus eyepiece is really smooth. There is no slop and it. it's really nice. It doesn't feel gritty whatsoever. So for eye relief, we are going to give it a 5 out of 5. So next we have the Focus Parallax. So it goes all the way down to 10 and all the way up to 15, 25, 50, 100, 200, and 500, and obviously infinity. So this is gonna be quite suitable for your air guns. You can really crank down that parallax setting to whatever distance you're shooting at. It's not the smoothest that I've ever felt on a, on a rifle scope at this price, but it's fairly decent. So for that reason, we are gonna give it a four out of five. Next, we have the accuracy. So let's get out to the range. We're gonna put it on my 223, and then next on my 308 to test the recoil. All right, so we got our zero on the 223. Let's see how good she does. Okay, so it wasn't perfectly zeroed. I'm a little low and a little left. The group's looking good though. Let's do two clicks right. And two clicks up. I know it moved a little bit on that shot. I mean, that's a pretty darn nice group. Let's see how good she does on the 308. So far we got a little bit of an upward spread, but that's not, still not too bad. Let's put a little group below it.
So for accuracy, obviously you did just fine. For recoil, just fine again. Next we have the turrets. So these turrets are actually very audible and fairly positive. Listen to this. And yeah, and the windage. So you can hear that's pretty good. It's not the most positive that I felt, but around $200, that's pretty darn good. Uh, there is a little bit of a drawback to this, these turrets on this rifle scope. It only has 50 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, which for most people is sufficient. But if you're looking to do long range shooting or if you're shooting air guns, well, you know that it has a lot of bullet drops. So you might wanna keep that in mind, or you might wanna consider, let's say the Vector Everest from the Vector line. I believe they have 65 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, which might be a bit more suitable for long range shooting. So let's head outside, let's go do a box test, let's validate the amount of internal adjustment, and let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. Let's go 10 MOA up. Perfect. 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 Let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. This is normally where you'd see it. All right, let's see how much internal adjustment it has. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's it. So very, uh, it's a very modest amount of internal adjustment. Additionally, you can re-zero the turrets by resetting these set screws, which lets you put it perfectly at the correct zero marker. Same thing for the windage. So it did just fine for the box test. It has 50 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. There was no point of impact change with magnification, which is really good. So we're gonna give the turrets a three out of five. Now, really the only reason why we're giving it a three out of five is for the limited amount of internal adjustment. Now, if you wanna capitalize on the amount of internal adjustment it has and don't have any issues, put a 20 MOA rail on your rifle. So next we have the reticle. Now this is a BDC type reticle. It is a preferred type of reticle that I like. I really like having that simple dot in the middle. It doesn't have a lot of holdover points, which is a little bit of a drawback I find. So for that reason, we are gonna give it a four out of five. And next we have the warranty. Now Vector Optics offers a five year limited warranty. So it covers all defects in workmanship and all that type of stuff. But if you damage it, obviously it's gonna be on you. So the thing about Vector is they are a Chinese company. However, they have a US based office. So if you do have a defect or you do have any issues, you don't have to send it all the way back to China, which I mean, which is the issue with a lot of the Chinese companies. Uh, they have an office in the US, so you just ship it back there and they're gonna ship you one right back and it won't take all that long. So we are gonna give the warranty a three out of five. I mean, this rifle scope is a pretty nice rifle scope. It does have a few limiting factors, obviously being the amount of internal adjustment, but if you put a 20 mm rail, you should be okay. If you are looking for similar products, maybe with a little bit more amount of internal adjustment, consider the Vector Everest or the Vector Marksman. So if you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review. Mm -hmm.